Hey everyone and welcome to this presentation on 3D printing. Today we're going to look at design pitfalls to avoid. This is presented by Quick Parts today as well. Our speaker today is going to be Tracy Beard. He is one of our director of operations. Tracy has over 40 years experience in the manufacturing industry and most of those are in prototyping or 3D printing. And with that, I'll hand it over to Tracy to kind of start the presentation and get us going today. All right, thank you, Matt. Um, so today, uh, the agenda for today, uh, we'd like to discuss some of the most common design pitfalls that affect 3D printed parts and maybe how to avoid those or how to correct your projects uh, uh, for upcoming jobs that you may have. Uh, we'd also want to briefly touch on some common 3D printed material strengths and weaknesses. So um, first topic is, you know, don't design walls and features too thin. Um, really, this is probably the most common issue we see when we're reviewing files for printing. Uh, so we always try to tell people to avoid excessively thin walls and small features. Um, so often uh, some of the thin walls and small features are able to be printed, but they just really can't survive the post-process cleaning and finish steps without some damage. So, uh, you know, a lot of times we're often asked, you know, how thin of a wall or how small of a feature we can build. Uh, and there's really not a firm answer. You know, it just depends on the geometry, uh, such as how long or how tall a, a small thin feature is, maybe the type of the printing process you choose, as well as your material selection. So uh, what we always say, the best way to ensure that your parts are printed correctly is to observe the industry standards uh, for feature sizes and wall thickness. Uh, so the below chart uh, recommends some of the minimum feature sizes and wall thicknesses. Uh, by process, so we can go through those. Sterile lithography being the, the first. Uh, in high resolution, uh, we can do a 15 thousandths uh, uh, minimum feature size. And, and high resolution, just give you a little update or a little insight on that, is a 2 thousandths uh, layer thickness and a 3 thousandths laser beam. Uh, so standard resolution SLA, we can do a 25 thousandths uh, minimum feature size. And that uh, standard resolution is a 4,000th laser beam, or 4,000th layer and a, and a 5,000th laser size. So uh, the other process is selective laser centering. Uh, the minimum feature size is 30 thousandths. Uh, what we call DLP, digital light processing, is, is 10 thousandths. Uh, FDM, or fused deposition modeling, is 60. And direct metal printing, DMP, is 10 thousandths. So on another uh, thing we see a lot is warpage and differential shrink. So um, really uh, warpage, differential shrink occurs when parts are either too thick or too thin. So different, uh, different 3D printing processes and material combinations react differently when it comes to warpage and differential shrinkage. But a good rule of thumb is to design parts with as close to uniform wall thickness as possible. Uh, so for us, an ideal wall thickness is about an eighth of an inch or 125 thousandths. Um, another thing to look at as well is when you're, if your design allows is to hollow or what we call shell out thick features in order to create a little more uniform wall thickness. So there are some materials that, that are better at, at uh, or, or handle warpage and differential shrink better. Some of those are like our glass field, nylon and glass field SLS powders, uh, as well as some of the composites and high temperature SLA and DOP resins. They tend to have less warpage and differential shrinkage than the resins with the lower heat deflection temperatures do. So um, one, of the, one of the processes that probably we see a little more warpage is the SLS process. And that's just due to the temperatures the parts are exposed to uh, while printing. And also DLP uh, parts seem to have a little more differential shrink than other materials do. So, so beware of low resolution models. So uh, it's really important to start with the highest resolution file that you can. Uh, and it's, it, it just gives you better success as far as smooth, well cleaned and finished parts. So. Uh, one of the things we tell people, higher, higher precision 3D printing processes such as SLS or SLA and DLP benefit the most from starting with high resolution file. And it's just simply because of the increased level of detail these printing processes can achieve. Um, 
So, you know, low resolution models, um, you know, they tend to have a choppier or what we refer to as a faceted surface. So, you know, while they can be printed with good success, uh, they re they often require some additional finish work, which leads to increased lead times and even additional costs. So, so starting starting with a high resolution file, it's it's especially critical when you need a highly detailed part or maybe a clear transparent part. So. So don't pick the wrong material. So uh, this the broad range of materials, right? So there's a wide range of 3D printing materials to choose from, and each have their own strengths and weaknesses. Uh, so we really tell people to be sure to research which material has the best properties to meet their particular application. Um, while you know, while most 3D printed materials are not as strong as their production counterparts. Uh, there's been a lot of recent advancements such as durability improvements and UV stability that have made them a good source for not only prototypes, but also low quantity, low to medium quantity production in use parts. So uh, the material process comparison chart below lists several materials that are currently available. We have an Acra Blue Stone, which is a high temp ABS, Duraform GF, which is glass field nylon, Acra 60, which is a PC, like material, Duraform TPU, which is an elastomer TPU, and an Acura Extreme White, which is a high impact ABS. But there, there's a lot of material options available that's not included in the list, such as, again, some more ABS like, some polycarbonate like, some polypropylene likes. There's a lot of nylons, elastomers, some really good high temp materials, some biocompatible capable materials there's some really good composites and clear transparents as well as just general purpose uh, for you to choose from in order to meet your your whatever your requirements are so one thing i can say is uh, you know researching materials but also feel free to reach out to some of our sales or facility professionals if you need additional advice on which materials that best suit your needs so, so thank you Awesome, Tracy. So thanks again. That was some great information there. So again, fi one final thank you here. And if you do have any more questions about Tracy's presentation or about how to get your project started at QuickParts, feel free to reach out to us at sales at quickparts.com. And thanks again for joining us, everybody. Appreciate it. Bye.